And we welcome you back to Tom Williams Memorial Stadium here in Natchez, Mississippi. Familiar with these uh, neck of the woods, the Natchez High Bulldogs and the Vicksburg High Gators. Familiar with Natchez because they always used to play the school I used to do games for, Jefferson County. And that was a yearly rivalry, whether it was in Fayette or here in Natchez. And for the second time in a few years, Vicksburg makes the trek down here to Natchez. The Gators looking for the second win in a row and Natchez 0-2 on the season. They lost uh, to Macomb and then Hancock 42-20 in week one. Welcome back to the pregame show. TJ Mayfield, Charles Edmond here. We're here with Vicksburg High Coach Chris Lacey. Coach, congrats again. I know it's a few days beyond us now, but getting that first win, uh, how did it feel when the final seconds ticked off the clock and getting your first win? Um, it felt good to see the players um, feel, you know, what it feels like to have a have a have a have a, a one in the win column um, this season. Um, for me, though, my mind goes straight to the what we did wrong into the next game. So I hadn't really had opportunity to enjoy it because I'm more focused on fixing what it was that we kind of need to fix and messed up on. Well, I tell you what, offensively, you were pretty balanced. 500 yards of offense, 250 yards through the air, 248 on the ground. That's about as balanced as it gets. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's, it's there. I mean, we got veteran guys on the offense who've been, like I say, two, three, four year starters. So we just got to spread the ball out um, evenly, which Coach Bennett did a tremendous job the whole week of practice and um, in the game of making sure we get the playmakers the ball. Got off to a fast start, couple of plays in. You got Ronnie Alexander, you know, on a big play, the first play of the game, a big pass play to Henderson, who had a big game. You know, talk about that and stretching the field early. Oh, we we was we made a big emphasis that week on trying to, you know, push the gas. I, I think we was kind of <laughs> conservative the past two weeks in the Jamboree and in the Red Carpet Bowl. So, you know, it's just how do we get the playmakers the ball? Everybody knows Tyler Henderson is a, is a big time player when he get the ball in his hand. So just trying to get a kid some momentum and get some confidence on running. Well, what is it about Tyler Henderson? They, they call him Tata. We call him that. And what is it about him as a receiver? You know, at the Jamboree, you know, people were talking on the sideline. He's one of the best receivers in the state. What makes him as good as he is? Well, he's a super athlete. Um, as they say, he come from good stock. You know, his dad was a really, really, really good football player here at Vicksburg, um, a legend. Um, when it come to Gator Ball, um, his brother Chris was a really good um, athlete here. So it's just, it's just in his blood. I mean, it's just genetics about him. And Tyler's a very smart kid, number one, academically. Um, and then athletically, you know, that adds to it. So he's a hard worker, three-sport athlete. Um, started on the basketball team, went, won a state championship and, and, and triple jump. So it's just in him. Tyler's a, Tyler's a really, really, really good kid. And he works hard. He's one of them kids that make everybody better. And what makes it uh, makes it better is when you get your running game going. You had uh, 200 plus yards rushing, 248. You know, you got you had everything going. You know, Ronnie doing some stuff. You have Malik Montgomery and then Blackmore. I mean, talk about the running attack. Well, you, it, it's good to have all those guys by committee who can um, contribute in their own different ways to uh, help us win the game. And I think the challenge was trying to figure out how can we allow them to be successful with. Um, the skill sets that they have. And I think we did a good job of doing that Friday. Forrest Hill, I tell you what, the score just didn't indicate just how physical they were. They had a quarterback that was just hard to bring down. He was probably the biggest player on the field, I would imagine, just looking at it from up above. He was a hard dude to keep yeah. it, to kind of control. You could tell they got a great, they program on the rise. I mean, even the head coach, you know, I took coach failed him from the beginning of the game. He was jacked up. So <laughs> I know if he jacked up, you know, his players going to follow suit. So they was, they was a very physical team. They played hard and he got them going in the right direction. And your, and, and your defense really got after it as well. Yeah. Um, me being, you know, still caught in plays on defense, knowing the standard that, you know, I had when it come to defense. They did well. We did. We we improved on some things. There was some new guys out there. Younger guys got an opportunity to um, play, like Thomas Hardman, who played a great game. Ended up catching the interception in the game. Um, got a couple of young defense ends in there. So we had a lot of guys that was able to play. But we just got to keep pushing the standard. Yeah. But what's 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 the one thing about about your defense? I mean, you you have not relinquished the defensive play calling. You're still doing that. So through two games. What's the upside and what are some of the things you got to improve there? The upside is is that they're young. And, you know, when you're young, you can still 
grow on top of, you know, what they got, and they just got to build some confidence. The downside of it is they're young, and, you know, they're still going to make those young mistakes and do those things, and it's just – it's a challenge for me, which I'm excited about because I'm able to coach every day. So it's a teaching thing that's going on right now. And good thing is that's, that's what these non-district games are for, to try to figure it out. You know, just getting to know you and studying you as a head coach, especially from the defensive side, as a coordinator and now as a head coach, how patient is, is are you? How, how patient is, is Coach Lacey when it comes to the game, when it comes to the defense? I know you're, I, even in the jamboree, like, come on, let's get it going. But uh, do you have to kind of temper your patience knowing that you're over the whole thing and we're defensive coordinator, like, ah, you, you got to be in it. But as a head coach, you got to have a little more of a tempered approach. Well, I, I just look at it as, like, it, it's three things in my eyes. Um, I know as the coach, I got I to gotta continue to coach, I got to continue to teach. That's where the patience come in, the teacher part of it. Um, the defense coordinator part of it is more so I demand a certain thing, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm looking for a certain expectation that y'all are supposed to uphold. So I'm not patient with the, with the expectation, but I'm patient with the teaching, if that makes sense. You know, I'm, I'm still going to put my foot on the gas and say, we got to play this way, but I do understand that it's going to take time. It is going to take time. This is game number three as we get ready for Natchez here at Tom Williams Memorial Stadium here in Natchez. You look at the Bulldogs, they lost to Macomb 41 to nothing, and then they lost to Hancock 42 to 20. They've had to deal with some COVID issues this week, so we'll get into that as we as we get ready for Natchez. Uh, for all the talk of Henderson to Corey Knight, it seems like every time to Corey Knight touches a football, he's one step. He's one second away from taking it to the house. Well, he, he's our Percy Harvey. You know, I, I compare him to Percy Harvey from, that played at the University of Florida and played for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, he does a lot. He does Swiss Army knife, you know. Um, he actually can play some defense. Um, but um, a lot of, I hear people say all the time he needs 30, 40 catches, and I'm like, no, he needs the catches to – I mean, he needs the touches to affect the game in a positive way like he does. Um, he's not going to be a 40-touch, 50-touch guy, but – 10 yards, I mean, 10 carries and five receptions is enough for him to affect the game in, in, in a way. Um, and it ain't too many like him. I mean, he he's a very, very, very special kid, and, you know, he's in that top 10 percentile when it comes to athletes. We talked about Ronnie Alexander. I mean, 250 yards passing. I mean, I can't remember a game in which he's had that that type of output. Um, I, I, I think some of it was, I tell people all the time, Ronnie's not that tall. You always hit a knock when people say, well, Ronnie's a short quarterback. Well, Cam Akers wasn't tall either. Um, there's a whole bunch of other quarterbacks who aren't tall at all. It's just figuring out what does he do well and then making that be a part of his game in order for him to be successful. I think Friday, Coach Bennett did a good job of letting Ronnie, you know, get the ball out quick on the perimeter. Um, allowing him to use his feet and run the ball. You know, people hadn't really seen Ronnie run the ball, but we making a big push and demand about him using his feet because that's one of his superpowers. When well, you talked about his size, are you concerned about him when he does take off that uh, he does he does take some licks, he does take some shots? Um, nah, because in this, this summer, one thing about Ronnie, Ronnie dedicated himself to the weight room. So I know he physically, if you, if you ever see him with his shirt off, he's not a – a small kid, like he's a thick kid, you know, he's just not that tall in stature, but Ronnie, is, he, man, he's 225, 235, 245 on the bench press, you know, just repping it, so I know he got the, the body to be able to take what he's going to do. And he's smart, he ain't just let nobody just, it was a lot of times he run, he see him come, he just go out of bounds, so he understands in his fourth year what it is that he has to do to keep himself safe. And Ronnie Alexander, 2,500 career passing yards. That says a lot. Something it? that people just don't understand is that that kid has been um, putting up the stats and being a leader the way that he's supposed to be. That's why I go into a, a bar fight with Ronnie if I needed to, because I know he's a guy that's going to you know, have my back. I got his. So for as much as, the, and it surprised me when I saw that stat, for as much in his past as running the wing tee and very little throwing attempts, for him to have 2,500 career passing yards, that jumps off the page. Yeah, and it, I mean, it says a lot about the, the guys that's around him. You know, his group of people, you know, throwing a Tyler Henderson for four years to help you get 2,500 yards, you know. So he has a good supporting cast around him that allows his skill set to flourish a little more. So, and, that, and that's the good thing. For all the good stuff, you got the win. 
but then we talked about the turnovers and the penalties. Let's let's start with the penalties. Uh, it was kind of a penalty riddled game last week. What do you do to clean those up? Well, it's just the, the just execution, doing what you're supposed to do, going through your keys, going through your checks. You know, I understand, you know, trying to learn a new offense and implementing younger guys. Because a lot of the penalties came from sophomores. So I know that's just a young, this field looks big type of deal. And then on defense, the aggressive way that I play defense, I had a coach tell me this weekend, you, you can't run an aggressive defense and not expect penalties to happen. So when, when it was explained to me this weekend by a guy that I look up to, I said, okay, sometimes you just gotta, you know, take it for what it is. So that's gonna happen sometimes, but it's not an excuse, but just knowing when you pinning your ears back and you playing defense as aggressively as I do, then, you know, penalties like that will happen. There's a, st there's a philosophy with that. You, you, gotta, you gotta grin and bear it. Right. <laughs> you gotta grin and bear it. That just comes, there's the good and the bad with there's that. good and the bad with it, exactly. Because the same way we play that aggressive is the same way we get a strip sack fumble return for a touchdown. So I just take it like it is. Well, what are the backstories of this game? And we're seven days beyond it. You were you played a lot of young guys. You you had to kind of send a message because there are some players who did not play. You went. You had to kind of make some changes a little bit for well, this game, this past game. Well, yeah, we had a, we had a nice number of kids who had to watch the game from the stands, and I'm not apologetic about you know letting that be known that you know sometimes people put this glare over Vicksburg like we're a team that uh, doesn't have any discipline or. We have behavior issues or this or that, but we're gonna teach it here that that's not the way to go because in college, you know, some that's not acceptable at all. And if my job is to prepare kids for the next level, then I'm going to do that. And yeah. that's exactly what the message that was sent is that we have a standard, it's gonna be followed, and if it's not followed, there's consequences behind it. What was what was the, the kind of the body language from those players after the game? I mean, you you got the the, the victory, and, and you, you know, obviously you try to rally the troops and get them ready for this week. But you know, what what was their response to you after that? Because I know that was tough. You know, trying to bounce back after a tough loss. You're at home. It's a game that a lot of people expect you to win, and you won in a big way. And yet those those individuals were sitting in the bleachers. Well, they understood. Um, they came. They was in the bleachers. I saw them. All of them huddled up together. And 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 for me. That, even though they had to sit out, I appreciate the fact that they would still come and support their teammates. That's what I'm more so looking for is like, when you mess up and you've done wrong, you accept your L, but then at the same time, are you still a good teammate? And they showed that this week has been one of the best weeks we have as far as practice go, attendance and um, attention to detail. So I expect them to be full, expect us to be full throttle going down to Natchez and I expect them to play that way. It's, it's never a good time to have it. Right. But if there is a good time to have it, it's early in the season when you're still trying to figure things out. You don't want to have this happen in a big district game down the stretch. You're trying to win a district title or try to make the postseason. Exactly. I mean, the thing is, is like I, we, 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 I told them this week, y'all, Natchez reminds me of Holmes County. And we can't have the mistakes that we had because if you play around with them, They'll run their scoreboard up on you. They got athletes, and and like I don't look at the record and say they 0 and 2. I look at it and say they play two other really good football teams. If you look at their records, and it's just gonna be one of them nights. And they've they've kind of dealt with the COVID issue, and we were talking about it before we went on. You know, Port Gibson, a school down the road from here, um, had to cancel their game last week. So COVID is still out there, and we were talking how you're doing some things within your locker room to kind of just kind of clean things up and disinfect and all that stuff to, to try to keep that down because COVID is still out it's here. It's still out there. I mean, we were, we've been working real well with the um, the people that come in and the company that comes in and cleans the field house sometimes. And we do our part in keeping it clean. And it's a so it's a, it's a, it's a collective effort by all of us to make sure the, the players are protected and nothing like that happens. So they've had to slow down their practice this week. Some players have been out. But as we get ready for this game, they're 0-2. Um, Kaden Walter, their Walton, their quarterback. Talk a little bit about you know this Natchez high team. What is deceiving about this 0-2 start? They've been outscored 83 to 20 in the first two weeks. How fast they are! How fast they are! How fast they are! How fast they are! They're fast on both sides of the ball, at the receiver position, the running back position, um, offense line, nice size guys. But on defense, they're they're very 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 aggressive and fast. Like they run to the ball probably better than I've seen anybody run to the ball this year. Um, and I mean, they just make it, they made making mistakes too that allowed them to, you know, the scoreboard to get out of the way. And I think they lost a couple seniors last year. So 
it's just one of them young things. Same thing we going through. But as far as effort and just athletic ability, these jokers can play some football. And that quarterback, we probably won't see one like him. So um, he thick, fast. Like I say, he reminds me of Holmes County. So it's just something that's been in the back of my mind all week. I think the last time we were down here was a high-scoring game, wasn't it? A very high-scoring <laughs> game. I think they ended up getting us by like two, three points down there in a the shootout. Um, it was my first year being defense coordinator, actually during COVID, I think, during the COVID year. Um, and they actually got us down there. So, you know, I'm one of them guys where I remember that. It's in my back pocket, too. And I want to try to go down there and get a win just to say I got one down there and for the kids. One, one thing about it, human nature says we don't, we don't forget. Co nah. Coaches don't forget nah. games. Coaches don't forget wins. Coaches darn sure don't forget losses. Right. I mean, anybody who on the skills, we expect to beat whoever on the skills. So we going down there with the mindset to play them and get a dub. They only had 31 yards rushing last week. Talk about their, talk about their running game. Um, it, now, that's a deceptive part because the quarterback is heavily involved in it. And when the quarterback's heavily involved in the run game, you know, that adds another hat to the blocking scheme. Um, people not being in the right place, he pulled one and keep it and go. Like I say, same thing that happened to us um, versus Holmes County. And that's how I'm looking at it. I'm approaching it like I'm watching the film. This is the same type of game. Um, what did we do in that game that messed us up in these situations? So, um, Natchez, and they run a fast-paced, hurry-up type of offense, so that right there presents his own challenges, too, with guys getting the call from sideline, lining up, things of that nature. So we just going to have to make sure we going through our keys and doing what we're supposed to do. The big thing is not missing tackles, and that's something that we've done a terrible job of doing this year is tackling, so we've made a challenge to do so. How does I keep hearing that over and over, Taz, looking at college football, missed tackles all over the place. Is that kind of – in football early in the season are missed tackles kind of kind of the way it is and because you don't do a, there's no exhibition you're hitting each other you're kind of back on is that is that just kind of even though you have the jamboree yeah is, are, are missed tackles kind of the way it goes in high school football early in the year well i, I wouldn't necessarily say today i think it's kids understanding that like in a college you know you it's a little more um they get a little more time to work on you know certain things but like, in, in my case, it's, to me, it's just a, uh, I call it contact confidence. You know, you have a lot of kids that go out and just want to stick their arms out and not necessarily trust in the, the, the technique of tackling. And I think that's the issue we have now is I got so many young kids who don't have any hours of banging around in a real game that they haven't developed the confidence yet to be really good tacklers. And the way you kind of balance that Libra scale off is – by running to the football. I mean, if I got 11 people around the ball, one missed tackle means nothing if I got 10 other people around the ball. So that's, that's the thing with, with us right now is, is just stop thinking so much. And when you see ball move, we run into the football and make it tackles. So it's, it's one of them. Finally, they say the biggest adjustment in football is between week one and week two. What was the biggest adjustment from week one, Holmes County, week two, Forest Hill? Less mental errors. Less mental errors and less missed blocks and missed tackles. Those three things right there are going to win football games. Whoever allow, gets people to miss, whether it's them or us, and who's making the blocks and who's making the tackles. So we kind of fixed that, and hopefully that's the case, I mean, this week. You were saying it's, it's, it's been a busy week at, at, at Vicksburg High, huh? getting, getting ready for Natchez. Right, and it has. Um, just all over the place, you know. Um, you get a win sometimes, people – like I said, at first we was riding that success wave from last year. Now you get a win, you still want to try to act like we made it again. Now you got to humble yourself and understand that we still made mistakes in that game. The highlight film I showed this weekend had nothing to do with what we did good in the game. I showed everything we did wrong. So I can make sure that's what we focused on, how to fix our wrong. Well, Coach, let's go get them. Let's get our second in a row. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's Vicksburg High Coach Chris Lacey joining us on the pregame show here from Natchez. We'll take a timeout, play-by-play, -play, coming up after this.